What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? How are you guys doing? Uh, it's been a little over 100 days since I've been using this Garmin Forerunner 745. And in that time, I've used it for open water swimming, pool swimming, indoor bike riding, you know, road biking, of course, and even mountain biking. I've run on it on the trails, I've run on the roads, uh, and even done some track workouts with it. So I figured now's as good a time as any just to kind of go over a few quick thoughts about this watch. And, you know, I'm not intending for this to be, you know, one of those super in-depth reviews, but, you know, I want this to be more of an update on, you know, things that I've found useful about this watch, and, you know, generally the features that I really haven't used at all over the past 100 days. But all of that being said, you know, I wanna be respectful of your time. So if you're pretty sure that you want this watch and you're just kind of checking to see if there's any major issues with this watch, I would say, you know, don't hesitate to purchase this Garmin Forerunner 745. It's absolutely fantastic. I haven't had any major issues with durability or, you know, any technical issues with this watch over the past 100 days. Now, I don't want you to take that to mean that I think it's the best triathlon watch on the market or even maybe the best option for you, uh, but we're gonna dive into all of that in this video. And just a quick reminder that I did pay for this watch with my own money. Garmin isn't sponsoring this video and they don't get to see any of the footage in this video before you guys get to see it here on YouTube. Uh, I actually purchased this watch from the Dialed Cycling Lab and I'll be sure to leave a link to them as well as you know any sort of discount code that I can find for this watch in the description of this video. And you know, looking at this watch after 100 days, I think one of the biggest questions that you guys might have for me is, you know, what about the durability? What issues are you starting to see in that amount of time? And the answer is, you know, not much so far. Uh, I haven't experienced any of that kind of water damage, like the stuff that we saw on the Garmin 935. Uh, the Garmin 935 was the predecessor to the Garmin 945 and there was this kind of like water damage that kind of leaked in through the buttons and it started to affect the temperature gauge, which ended up breaking the altimeter on the watch. Uh, but the Garmin 745 has been rock solid. I've been using it, I've been pressing buttons underwater, all the stuff that you're not supposed to do, and it's been fine. Uh, the top lens material, that's, you know, that Gorilla Glass material. Uh, I, I haven't been using a screen protector and so far, you know, I don't see any scratches across the glass. In fact, I don't even see any sort of nicks or scratches in the bezel across the top of the watch or any damage that's done to that kind of heart rate sensor that's, you know, on the back of the watch. And this is kind of like one of those common places that you see damage on Garmin watches, kind of the crack in the heart rate sensor. So far, so good, no problems that way either. You know, all of that being said, uh, I always recommend to people buying these watches that they kind of go ahead and pick up a screen protector. Uh, unless they're picking up one of those Garmin watches that has a sapphire lens. I think those things are rock solid. I don't think they need anything for protection that way. Okay, there's a ton of stuff on this Garmin 745 that I really haven't found that useful. Uh, one of those things being kind of this new daily workout suggestions. Uh, so Garmin has uh, a Garmin coach and they also have a daily suggested workout. Super cool features. You know, it's just something that I don't use. I actually, you know, kind of found it annoying and it is one of those things that you can actually turn off within the watch. Uh, you know, for me personally, you know, I'm gonna follow either what's on my workout schedule, uh, some sort of training plan. And in all honesty, you know, uh, a lot of times it's just whatever I have time for on any sort of given day. Another newer feature that Garmin has that is on this watch is that Garmin Pay feature. Uh, that's just the ability to be able to pay for items with your watch and it works with NFC So uh, you basically kind of add your banking credit card information into the watch and then you can actually pay for stuff It is secure. It's just not something that I've personally used uh, last I checked it didn't actually work with my bank uh, So it's not even something that I've been able to test yet. It seems like a cool idea again You know typically I'll have my wallet with me if I'm going for some sort of long bike ride where I might actually need to buy something uh, and, and you know running wise I just haven't needed to use it now You know I personally don't typically stress out about you know changing watch straps or things like that with these devices But 
Uh, I did switch out the strap on my 945 and it was a little bit of a pain, uh, but I don't have really major issues with the standard black strap that comes with the 745. But what I did notice was that there wasn't any sort of clear visible screws or any sort of quick release on the strap. And it turns out that uh, changing the strap on this watch is actually a real pain in the ass. And you know, I am planning on making a separate video talking specifically about how to switch out the strap on this particular watch. And I'll probably try to post that next week. Uh, but you know, that's something small to keep in mind. It's, it's not something that's easy and quick to do. Now, another huge feature is, you know, Garmin music, you know, that's that onboard music on the device itself. And that's definitely one of the big selling points for this watch. But for me personally, it's just one of those features that I thought that I would use all the time, but it turns out, you know, I really never use it. Uh, I actually think it's because, you know, syncing music and syncing podcasts, it's not super smooth on this device. It's not that hard once you get it set up, but you know, in all honesty, I, I just find it that much easier to run with my phone that kind of already has a connection to all my music and all my podcasts and it's loaded and ready to go. Now, don't think just because I didn't use the onboard music that this isn't a worthy successor to the Garmin 735, which is the predecessor to this watch. This watch is, you know, so much more powerful, so many more features, and it's significantly smaller. This watch is only 43 millimeters in diameter. Uh, it's got a depth of 13 millimeters, which is quite small. And remember kind of the depth of the watch is really kind of what makes it feel big or small. Uh, the weight of it is nice and light too. It's only 47 grams, but the screen size is still actually the same as some of those bigger watches on the market. It's still that 1.2 inch screen with a, a 240 by 240 pixel color display. So here is a quick look of this watch on my wrist. Uh, keep in mind that I have very small wrists. I like to think of them as my aerodynamic wrists. Uh, then here is the same watch on my wife's wrist. Now, one of the things that I've absolutely loved most about this watch is just how precise the GPS tracking is. It's actually the most accurate GPS tracking that I've ever tested on any of the watches that I've tested on this channel. And you know, with this watch in particular, they've actually included something called track mode, which makes tracking distance, you know, even more accurate when you're doing some sort of track workout or track session. Uh, and you know, it does need to kind of register the track. So you do have to do a couple of laps. And then after that point, it'll know the track and it'll kind of store it in memory. Now, I really like this track mode for some reason. I know that we know the distance when we're on the track, but it's just something that I would definitely use every single time that I go to the track. I like to have accurate distances when I'm out there and I like to have accurate totals when I'm done. And for me personally, you know, I am very familiar with Garmin watches and I get that there is a learning curve to these watches, uh, but I love how this watch is able to kind of connect with all the different weird devices that I use. It's got Bluetooth in Ant Plus. So it doesn't have any difficulty connecting to my bike power meters that I have. Uh, all of the different heart rate monitors that I've been testing on this channel lately. Uh, it'll even kind of pick up the cycling radar system that I use for my bike and it'll actually display traffic on the watch itself. Now, one of the issues that I've been having with a lot of the watches that I've been testing recently is swimming. A lot of the watches just really don't have that good swim activity mode. And over the past hundred days, it was actually worth it for me to like take a watch off, put it aside and slap on the Garmin watch like this one, uh, just because the swimming metrics and the swimming tracking data is so much better on this Garmin device. And you know, when you're finished with the workout, you know, this watch is fantastic because it'll just connect to my home Wi-Fi when I get home and I don't have to think about uploading it or downloading it to my phone and then uploading it to this location or that location. All I have to do is set it up to where it, you know, automatically goes up to Garmin Connect and then onto Strava. And the only thing that I really need to remember is just update my Strava title, which you guys, if you guys watch my Strava account, you'll probably see that I sometimes forget to do that even. Uh, but with this watch, there's probably a thousand other features that it does extremely well, which 
kind of brings me to this weird point. We all think that we don't need all of these features, which is absolutely true. Uh, we might need five or 10 things that we find really, really useful, kind of critical stuff for us. For me, you know, maybe that's swimming metrics. For you, that might be something completely different. Maybe it's track mode, or maybe it's that daily suggested workouts. And you know, for each of us, those five to 10 things are really important. But Garmin has those thousand different features in a watch. And I think that that tends to make it work well for a lot of different people. And while the Forerunner 745 does have, you know, all of these different features, the Garmin 945, uh, this watch here actually has, you know, the same amount of features plus a few extra, you know, stuff like golf in it. The watch itself actually has extra storage space and it has mapping, which is fairly important. Uh, one of the most significant things is the larger battery life, which I really enjoy on any watch that I've tested. Really, you know, let's keep this going. Garmin, you know, push that envelope on the battery life. I really wanna see what you guys can do. But keep in mind that the suggested retail price on the Garmin 945 is $100 more than the Garmin 745. Uh, it's uh, a suggested retail price of 600 versus 500. So they are expensive watches. And one thing to keep in mind is, you know, you will see sales prices on the 945, whereas the 745 is actually hard to find at this point. Uh, and so if you do find something on sale, I actually saw sale prices on the 945 getting really close to the price of the 745, which was absolutely ridiculous around the holiday season. Uh, but definitely keep an eye out for sales and deals and things like that on both of these watches. So I would say, you know, two reasons to potentially hesitate on the Garmin 745 would be that the 945 is a slightly better watch for a very kind of similar price, kind of depending on those sales. Uh, and then secondly, you know, Garmin will eventually release the 955. It's kind of coming around to that time frame. I personally don't have any sort of insider information or anything weird like that. Garmin doesn't tell me things, uh, but it might be worth waiting to just kind of find out and see what that watch has to offer before making a big purchase. But overall, you know, the Garmin 745 is a fantastic device. And, I'll leave a few more videos talking specifically about this watch, you know, on some cards over here somewhere uh, so that you guys can learn more about the watch. And as always, you know, whether you're shopping for watches or you could care less about it, uh, get out there, swim, bike, run, rinse, and then repeat it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.